All skillful qualities, the Buddha once said, are rooted in heedfulness. And when we talk about heedfulness, it also means non-complacency. We tend to focus on the dangers around us, dangers inside us, because they're there. We have greed, aversion, and delusion. And there are parts of my, our minds that really like greed, aversion, and delusion. And that's a danger. As the Buddha once said, the mind is capable of almost anything. You think of all the animals in the animal kingdom, all the different shapes and sizes and classifications. He said the mind is more variegated than that. Your mind can take on the role of any animal. When the world is going well, it's easy to live a fairly moral life. The question is, suppose things started to break down. Can you trust yourself that you wouldn't give in to the, the impulse to kill or steal or lie to get what you needed? When you'd see that what you need is not the food or whatever, but what you need is to maintain your virtue. Can you trust yourself to see that? That's the dangerous side of heedfulness, realizing the dangers are there and they're real. But the other side of heedfulness is realizing you have the opportunity to protect yourself against those dangers. That chant we had just now on aging, illness, death, and separation doesn't end just there. It goes on to say we have our actions, and what we experience will be, depend on our actions. So there's our opportunity. We should be grateful for that. This is something we should appreciate. We do still have the opportunity to develop virtue, develop de generosity, to develop the mind through the meditation. We have the time, the location the environment that's conducive to that. So it's good to appreciate that. The fact that we're here depends on the generosity of many, many people. So we appreciate that, and then we decide how can we carry that goodness on. There's a saying in Thailand that the sign of a good person is gratitude. Because if you're grateful for the good things that other people did, you realize that they had the choice not to do those things. But they saw that it was worthwhile. And it's not easy all the time to do the right thing. But they made the sacrifice. They did the difficult thing. And if you're grateful for that, that's a sign that you're appreciative of that, and you see that there is goodness that comes from doing the difficult thing. Like right now, training the mind. It would be easy to let the mind wander around as it like. You've got a whole hour here and nobody's checking up on you. There's no meditation monitor to look into your mind to see if you're actually taking advantage of the opportunity. But your own heedfulness is your monitor. Appreciating the fact you've got the time right now. So make the most of it right now. This is how you carry on the goodness that got you here, both in terms of your own good karma and in terms of the generosity and goodwill of others. And one of the best ways of carrying that on is practicing, training the mind. Because the goodness of the world does come from the mind. All the good things we want to do in the world are best done from a mind that's centered, clear, discerning, alert, observant. You know, they say that the road to hell is paved with good intentions, but the road to nirvana is paved with skillful intentions, which means that you look at your good intentions and you ask yourself, when I acted on these good intentions in the past, were there any times when I seem to have made a mistake.
when it didn't come out the way I wanted it to. We, if you have the opportunity, you go and talk that over with people who are advanced on the path. The Buddha gives a very basic instruction to his son that's always useful to keep in mind, that before you do something, ask yourself what do you expect the results are going to be. And if you expect any harm, you don't do it. If you don't see any harm, you go ahead. While you're doing it, you check for the results that are coming up in the course of the action. And again, if you see any unexpected harm, you stop. If you see no harm, you can continue. When the action is done, if you see that it caused harm over the long term, if it was an action of the body or an action of your speech, you go talk it over with someone and then resolve not to repeat the mistake. If it's just a mental action, something you were thinking about and it had a bad effect, you don't have to talk it over. You could just have a sense of shame around that, a healthy sense of shame, realizing that you're better than that. There's a part of you that's better than that, and you shouldn't stoop to that kind of thinking again. Notice if you make a mistake with the body and speech, the Buddha doesn't say you should automatically be ashamed, because sometimes there are th things out there that are beyond your means of knowing. That's why you want to talk it over with someone to gain a sense of whether the mistake was avoidable or whether it was just one of those things. If you saw that your action caused no harm at all, then you take joy in the fact that you're on the path. You're taking good advantage of the opportunities that are open to you. Because right now the opportunities that are open to you are easy. You can meditate. You can be moral. You can be generous. There are times when the, op the skillful opportunity is not easy. It requires some sacrifice. It's always possible to do the skillful thing. That's something we should always bear in mind. I don't know how many times you read people say, well, there are times when you just sort of, there's no choice but to do something against the precepts. And they invent scenarios. And all the scenarios show a huge lack of imagination. There are so many ways that we can deal with the situations that are skillful. It takes a lot of imagination. It takes a lot of energy. Sometimes it requires a lot of sacrifices. The things you want to maintain, you realize you've got to give up if you want to maintain your virtue. And your virtue is worth that. Always remember that. But right now it's easy. We can sit here with this breath and the next breath, and there's nobody running in to disturb us. You strengthen your mindfulness, strengthen your alertness, strengthen your concentration. These are all good things, because it's from the mind that your actions spring. And if the mind is in good shape, you're more likely to do the right thing to see what the right thing is and have the strength to do it. So all the goodness comes from right here. If you go looking for goodness in other people, you can be happy when you find it, but there'll be a lot of times when you can't. But don't let that have an effect on your goodness. Make that the given in all of your intentions, that you want to do the right thing, the skillful thing that doesn't harm anyone and, if possible, can help others, and help in your own development of virtue, concentration, discernment, your goodwill, compassion, your empathetic joy for people who are doing good things, your compassion for people who are doing unskillful things and your equanimity for cases where you know you can't make any difference, so you have to let things go. But we should appreciate the fact that we have the opportunity to develop these qualities now and make the most of it. Because the opportunity may not always be here. Or well, there will be the opportunity to do skillful things, but it's going to come with a lot of sacrifice.
There was a German poet back in the 18th century who talked about the difference between acting with grace and acting with dignity. Acting with grace is when you know what the right thing is and you're inclined to do it. Your feelings push you in that direction. But then there's, there are times when you know the right thing to do and it's hard. It goes against your feelings. And yet you're able to convince yourself to override your feelings and do the right thing. That's an act with dignity. To have appreciation for the opportunities when you can act with grace. And use those opportunities to develop the strengths so when the time comes when the right thing requires that you act with dignity, you've got the strength to do that as well.